All right, I'm back with the third and final version of this form. And I, I wanted to show you this one because I wanted to start getting you comfortable with using other people's components. So, so far we've been hand doing all of our CSS and our markup and in our templates in order to create our components. And that's fine. Uh, you're going you're gonna to do lots of that. But as you start to build larger and more complex applications, you're going to have, uh, I don't know, you're going to want to rely on pre-built components the same way if you're learning to cook, you know, you're not going to make everything from scratch. There's lots of things where it's just faster, cheaper, easier to use pre-built things uh, than to, you know, hand roll everything that you're going to be creating. So I wanted to show you some really excellent um, components and you've used them lots of times. If you have an Android phone or you've used uh, products by built by Google, which I know all of all of us have, then you've worked with the material design components in the past. And so there's a there's a really good set of components that are available. So if you go to material.angular.io, you can work with these components. And when you work with like one of the reasons I think you should consider working with these components is that they have done a lot of the hard work for you. So they've made these components accessible. So for people who are looking for accessibility features, like we haven't built any accessibility features into a lot of what we've done so far, which really isn't good. So this is gonna give us automatic accessible uh, components. They're already internationalized. So if we wanted to do this with different, supporting different languages, we could. And something that's really nice about this is that, you know, these were built by the same people who, who built Angular. So they're designed to work in the environment where we're working right now. So that's kind of nice. And, you know, just while I'm talking about this, um, if you're interested in these components for React, there's a version of them called Material UI which is um, the same, basically the same idea, the same visual components, but they are for React instead of working for Angular. So we're obviously gonna do it for Angular. Okay, so here's how you use them. So if you go to the getting started guide, essentially what you have to do is you have to NPM install a bunch of things. You have to set up a bunch of stuff inside of your workspace, etc., And a lot of it can be simplified by just using this one command, ng add, material, angular material. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna add in angular material. It's gonna install everything via NPM for me. It's going to, um, it'll ask me a couple of questions in terms of theme, like I'll just show you right now. So when you install this, you can use, you can have different visual styles like um, and you can do custom ones too. So if you wanted to pick a theme for how these components are going to look, um, I'll just use the I'll just use the default here. Do I want to set up the typography styles? Do, in other words, do I want to use their fonts? I'll just say yes, and I'll sh I'll do all the defaults yes to show you. It'll install all those packages. Make sure that I have everything that I need installed and set up in my in my Angular project to be able to do this. So the way that this works is you're going to you're going to work with all of the different components and there's components to do everything like you know if you need to put uh, buttons check boxes if you need to make cards if you need a date picker if you need tables if you need grids icons all kinds of stuff um, you know you can do you can do this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use um, some of the form field elements to be able to show, here, I'll show you the form field here. Let's go back. I basically want some of these fancy features. Like for example, if I click on this form here, this field here, you'll see that the label, it springs, it animates up to the top there. And then my placeholder text is available. You can put hint text down below. Some of this nice stuff that's here and the code to do this looks like this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the material components 
to wrap your inputs and so on. You're going to replace the label with a matte label, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so let me just show you, you know, what's involved in, in making this work. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to go and import a couple of modules inside of my app.module.ts. So I'm going to import um, the material input module, Angular material. And I'm also going to import the form field module from Angular material uh, form field. And I'll pull both of these into my imports. So I want to do mat form field module and I want to do mat input module. So those will be available to me. And it'll compile those pieces in to my project so that I can use them. Let's go ahead and I, I just for sake of time, what I've done is I've created a new component called bridge form material. And I've copied over the code. I've copied over the code that we had for our reactive form. So I'm going to build on the reactive form and just make a number of modifications to this thing so that it, it, it works the way we want. So as we have for all of our other forms in my routing, I'm going to add one more path and I'll call this new uh, material. And I'm going to import my I'll import my bridge form material component and I'll make a route so that I have access to it. And let's go here to material and here's our form. Okay. So what I want to do here is I want, Essentially, I just want to play with a different set of components in the template. I'm really not going to change anything else. So what I'm going to do, I have a form. All of this can stay the same, but I'm going to change the structure of what I do here for um, for each of these. So let me let me leave this and show you below it what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use a material form field component, and it's going to wrap up both the label and the input. So my I'm going to do my label with, instead of using the native HTML5 label, I'm going to say that I want to use the material label, and I'm going to say the label is ID. And then below that, what I can do is I can grab my input, like so, and I can stick that in here, like this. And the only change that I'm going to make to this is I'm going to specify that this is, I want this to get managed by the material components. So I'm going to, I'm going to add the material input to this so that my form field automatically knows that it, it belongs, it belongs to it. So I'm going to, I'm going to delete this and essentially I'm going to, I'm going to do this pattern um, all the way down. So let's do this here this is going to be name this is going to go in one this is going to be this is mat input and this is going to be like so i'm going to get rid of the label reduce push this in Change this to lat, latitude, 
and I'm going to say this is mat input. Almost done. Um, year. And I'm just going to get rid of this. I'm not going to worry about, I'm going to get rid of my errors display, my button for now. I just want to focus on these fields like so. And let's get rid of this. I don't care about that. And let me Uh, let me fix, let me just fix this. Uh, it looks like it's sending me to the wrong component. I must have done my routing incorrectly. So my material, yeah, this should be material. Let's try that. New material, okay, and let's go to here, save this. All right, let me debug this and see what's wrong. I just debugged this and I needed to restart my compiler. So sometimes I find um, if, you know, you look at your code and you're like, well, this this needs to be right. Uh, but I had added these other dependencies, but I didn't restart ng-serve, so I killed ng-serve, restarted it, and it's fine. So this code is right. So what we have now is I've got the material angular components managing my form. So you can see how they work. So if I click on any of these, what happens by default is that the label animates up to the top, and then you get your placeholder text here. And you can do some other stuff too, like on this year, for example. Um, I could put, um, I could put a hint. And you can see how it's put it below the, uh, below the control and when I click on this, you know, I get four digit year, it tells me the hint. And you can see how they're automatically lighting up red when the values are not, not acceptable. But if I put in uh, a name, latitude, whatever, 49, etc., all the way down, if I do this, this is wrong. But if I do 2020, it's good and it comes on. So I'm getting a bunch of things for free by using these components. And they're really powerful. So if you take a look at all the examples, like there's different styles. Let me show you. Um, there's different variants for the way it could look. Like for example, if you like it with an outline around it like this, then you can see that all you have to do is say appearance equal outline. 
So I'll do that in mine. So if I put that on my ID, for example, you'll see that it, it looks different, right? So you can, you can decide how you want it to look. There's a bunch of built-in styles. You can change the way that this floating label works. You can put icons in, you know, there's a, there's a lot of nice things you can do. You can do error messages, um, things like putting, you know, an icon in the end here or suffixes and prefixes for certain fields. Like if you want to add dollars to the front or cents to the end or all different kinds of things like this. So really, really powerful, but also really easy to use. So it's like you built a really, you spent a long time building a really complex input control and now you can use it in, you know, use it everywhere. And, you know, so if you need, if you need to put in buttons or you need an autocomplete field, um, all of those things have already been pre-built and you can, you know, you can grab these components, lots of different buttons. So you pick your button that you want to put in here and like you use, uh, you use the material button stylings, like it will take care of making it look a particular way for you. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to briefly show you this because, you know, our, our form, it has a more professional feel to it. It's got some nice animations. It has some nice air handling responses. The validation shows up with the CSS and I, you know, my my template isn't that much more complicated in order to make this happen. I'm just wrapping it in a form field and using the built-in, uh, using the native input element, but using mat, mat label, mat form field, and so on to to make this work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it there. I'll throw this code up on GitHub and you can have a look at it and try it yourself. But you know. Take a look through working with template driven, working with reactive forms, and also working with um, different form controls through things like Angular Material to make your forms more professional and easier for your users to use.